Hi, this is Tea Weeder Tool back with you uh, with a few more tips. Uh, the Tea Weeder, if you own any property on any body of water and you have a problem with weeds, uh, check out the Tea Weeder. It's uh, a good solution to all your aquatic weed problems. I've been having some issues with, uh, I have a 2500 uh, pound worn wench on my ATV, this is a 2005 uh, Outlander Bombardier before they became Can Am. Uh, anyway, uh, last year I had to take the winch off, and uh, the wires that connected to the brushes had come had broken, so I had to kind of rebuild that part of it. And ever since uh, then, when I uh, release the pressure on the winch it makes kind of a grinding sound and I thought at first maybe it was just the cable was uh, you know grinding on itself and so I unspooled the whole cable and spooled it back and it's still doing it so I'm wondering if I need to put a little grease on the gears inside the winch or something I went on uh, the internet trying to find some instructions on how to do this and didn't have much luck with that so I'm going to try and uh, document it as I go okay I started off by removing the hook from the end of the the cable. It was just a couple of U-bolts and then I was able to pull it through there because I'm going to have to pull the cable through the fair lead at the front and uh, obviously couldn't do that with the hook on there. And then I'm going to next uh, disconnect the power from the uh, from the winch. So there's the two power leads. I pulled the rubber boots away to expose the screws or the nuts and then uh, the blue ones to the front and the yellow one is to the rear of the motor and uh, and then when I get done with that down below or in the back here uh, it's hard to see but behind uh, back behind the mounting plate in the rear there's two uh, bolts on each side I'll remove those and then the wench should pull away from uh, the mounting plate Okay, I've got the power disconnected from the motor. Uh, that was a 7 uh nut on there. And then I've got the uh, bolt on the back side of the winch on the uh, mounting plate uh, disconnected. Uh, there's the bolts there, and those were a half inch. And one thing that came in handy, I've got this ratcheting uh, open end or box end wrench that ratchets. And that was really handy because it's really tight to get in there so uh, using that ratcheting wrench made it a lot easier to get those bolts off. So now I'll pull the cable through the the fair lead and should be able to uh, wiggle the, the winch assembly out of there so I can take it apart and see what's going on. Okay I put it in free spool and took all the cable off the the spindle here and then to remove the uh, rest of it all it is is this uh, the cable goes in into the spindle here it goes through and then it's a little wider on this side and it just, all it does is it loops back in and you jam you jam that loose end of the cable uh, into that wider opening in the spindle and then put tension on it pull it back and then that's how it locks it in so there's no knots or anything else but that's enough to keep it from pulling out so I'm going to remove the rest of the cable and then it looks like there's some uh, hex bolts four of them on each side that hold the two pieces together that hold these these bars uh, to keep the two pieces so I'll probably just have to take these top two off initially at least uh, to pull this apart and, and get to the gears and this is a worn 2500 pound uh, 2.5 CI uh, worn winch okay these uh, hex bolts on the end uh, it's a 3 16 uh, Allen wrench and as soon as I released the two on the motor side, uh, there's a, there was some spring tension in there and it kind of pushed it apart. So uh, as I get into it a little more, I'll see what's in there as far as what type of spring is uh, causing that, uh, that pressure to push the two pieces uh, apart in there. Okay, I'm going to put the camera on a tripod. I started to pull it apart and uh, just to kind of get an idea here of, of what we're what we got going. Um, okay, so it looks like there's a shaft in here and it's got a spring on it and that looks, I, I suspect that was what was causing the, the pressure on there. So 
the shaft, the spring part went into the motor side and you can see there's a, a gear in here. Um, and then, let's just see what we get. I want to make sure I don't get too far ahead of myself. This shaft comes out and there's a tapered end on this end opposite the spring and then there's a little retaining clip on here it looks like that holds the spring in place. So that tapered end goes toward the, the free spool uh, part of the wench. And then we've got the spindle and there's uh, some gears on this side. There's some kind of a ring, a split, a ring with a split in it over that, uh, that side of the gear. On this side, uh, there's no gear. The gear, the side toward the motor does not have a gear. Um, and there's a, another split ring or some kind of a spacer thing over the, over this on this side. So um, I'll just have to remember that the geared part goes uh, toward the free spool end and this gear, there's a, a gear inside here and that goes uh, inside of that I guess. So um, get a little deeper into this and see what we got. Okay, so I took the two hex or yeah hex bolts out on, that would be on the bottom side and there, there's a retaining uh, piece here that goes up like that that holds this plate in place here. Uh, and then underneath here, as that plate comes out, uh, there's two bolts, or nuts I should say, that go in, that sit in place here, that uh, is what the, the wench, uh, when it's the mounting plate, go into. So I'm going to lift this piece off of here. Okay, that's kind of cruddy looking in there. and could use a little grease it looks like. Uh, so anyway, here's those two nuts that sit in here in these little slots that uh, this plate uh, holds in place. And then this goes over the top of that to, to hold uh, that on. So now we'll get into this a little bit uh, a little bit further and see what we got going on here. Might as well just take these nuts out here. They're probably going to fall out when I turn it around anyway. Okay. So now, uh, to get this gear out of here, I'm going to get a, maybe a screwdriver. I'll clean all this up. So there's a little gear on top. Just prying this out gently, kind of going around. Maybe I can just turn it over and perhaps it would just drop out of there. With all the dirt and crud. Yeah, it is starting to come out a little bit. Okay, so there, this is I think called the planetary gear. Um, so that goes in with the, the gear on the top and that part going down to the bottom. So that uh, just sets in there. And then there's another gear in here. Yeah, it was just kind of gummed up. So that piece goes in first and again the gear to the top and uh, and it just goes in that like that and then there's a gear in here and the flat part goes it just sits straight down on top of a little uh, piece in there it just sits in this it just centers in there so to reassemble this I assume this will just sit there this uh, piece with the taller gear will uh, go in on top and then this piece that's a little flatter with the flatter gear on top will sit on top of that one. So I'm going to take this part all apart. It's all really gummy grease in there. I'm going to clean that up and then uh, put this part together before I take apart the other side. Okay, I took all the pieces apart and then I washed them in gasoline. I washed them with a, just used a toothbrush and got all the grease out of the inside of the this housing, this is just, I think it's all just a plastic, even those uh, splines around the edge are plastic. But So everything is uh, clean and I'm going to grease it with some uh, low temp uh, lithium grease before, uh, before I put it all back together permanently. But I'm just going to dry fit it. So I take the little sprocket, I'm going to put that in there just because that will be a little easier.
Okay, got it in. Took some wiggling. I had to get that other gear centered. And then this one just goes uh, over there with the the wide uh, gear to the top. And okay, that's in there. And then the spindle will go through the or the, the little gear axle will go through the spindle and then the spindle, this one, will sit on top of there and that will go back together like so. So uh, this side's all cleaned up. I'm going to grease it, put it back together and then I'm going to uh, take the other, this other side apart, uh, the motor side, and uh, do the same thing, clean up all the gears in there. They look like the grease is all really hardened in there also. Okay, I've got the first part I had taken apart, the free spool side, uh, all greased up and all put back together. I put the little uh, post back on there. Uh, so that's parts all ready to go. I really loaded it up with grease on the inside. Uh, this, the motor side now, I've, uh, I took off the two uh, hex bolts from the bottom and just like the other one, uh, the two little bolts that uh, fit into the slots here that uh, that go to the mounting plate, those came out. And then uh, the little, this is the plate that goes on the bottom, you know, like so. And then this is the piece that goes on the outside of that. So uh, I've got those parts all out now. And now I'm gonna uh, see what we got here for the gears. Uh, again, it looks like a kind of a planetary gear in here. We'll see how to get that to come out. If I turned it upside down and shook it, it might just all come out, but I want to make sure I don't lose any parts or get them out of order. So there is a gear on the outside here. That's that one that I couldn't really figure out why it's there necessarily. Um, but okay, so here's the first planetary gear and it's got some pretty crusty uh, grease on there so I'll clean that up in gasoline also and then looking inside uh, there's a another uh, gear and it was in with the flat side down so that just goes on to a uh, there's a uh, spindle in there and it's you can see there's a flat side on that so that spindle uh, it just it can only go on one way it looks like so I'll clean up the inside of this and re-grease it. Uh, last year when I took the motor apart, these bolts here are really long. They go all the way through. You can kind of see them poking out there. That's what holds the motor to the, to the gearbox. Um, I'm not going to get into that this year. That, the motor seems to be fine. It's just there's some grinding noise that I am trying to address. So I'll clean this up and then put it back together and hopefully it works when I'm done. Okay, I've got the, uh, the planetary gear all cleaned off. Wash that in gas like the other one. And uh, I didn't mention, I forgot to mention, I think, that uh, after I got done doing that, I used an air compressor to blow everything out to get it really nice and cleaned off and dry. I cleaned it off with a rag and then blew it out with an air compressor. Um, this part, you know, I don't know if you can see in there, but there's two uh, holes or openings, and I, I can't remember. I don't know if those go into the electric motor or not. So when I washed this in the gas, I was really careful. I just held it upside down and kind of dipped it in the gas and then scrubbed it, and I always kept it uh, kind of upside down. So uh, in the event that those holes in here uh, do go into the electric motor, uh, no liquid would seep in there. So I clean that out as best I can. I'm going to grease it up now and put it all back together. Um, and again, it just goes back opposite. Uh, you know, this uh, goes right onto the little uh, axle in there. And then this, uh, if you forget about how, which direction this goes in, this hex shaft is tapered at one end and it's a hex on the other end and you can see it's going to go in here because that's, there is a, uh, there is a hex in here. So this hex shaft is tapered on one end and uh, it'll only go in, in here one way. So. Uh, that'll help you to keep the orientation correct. So I'm going to grease it all up, put it back together, and uh, see how it goes. Okay, uh, one thing I noticed as I'm putting this back together, I've got everything greased up, that uh, little uh, kind of that collar, that nylon or plastic collar that was around the spindle, 
Uh, you know, I, I, know, I mentioned earlier there's a little split in it. And if you look on both ends, on this end, the motor end, and also on the free uh, spool end, there's a little nipple at the top of the housing here. So I, I took the little uh, collar off, the plastic collar, and I put it on there just to make sure that uh, little split lined up with the nipple. And then I think that way it'll be easier for me to put these two pieces together and just uh, get this part, get that collar to go into this hole here. So that'll be my next step. Uh, put these pieces together and then use these last two bolts at the top, these hex bolts, to connect the two pieces with those uh, spacer tubes that go across there. So I just wanted to mention that there's that little split uh, in that collar and it needs to line up with that nipple on there. I thought I'd mention once I, uh, to put this back together, because that one uh, shaft in there is spring-loaded, I found it easier to uh, put the motor side on top and just wiggle it around until everything lined up. And now that it's, it's, uh, everything's lined up, I'll be able to tighten these hex bolts uh, to connect the two sides. Uh, it was a little difficult to get everything to match up and hold it together, uh, laying, on, laying flat with that spring. So this... Uh, Doing it this way helped uh, to get things together and hold them together. Okay, it's all back together and installed and uh, seems to be working just fine. It uh, isn't making any more grinding noise like it was before. Uh, here we go. Sounds nice and smooth. Hope the video helps somebody.